Let's talk about the stimulus now. Some huge news on the stimulus front. Grover is super excited about this, as am I. Because turns out there are quite a few things that Vice President Biden, President-elect Biden, can do through executive actions. Now, these are things that were not on the table for President Trump. This is, these are not things that President Trump was interested in doing because there are too many big money, uh, big money guys telling him not to do this. While you have right now, you have Nancy Pelosi and Mitch McConnell in the Senate and the House resuming stimulus talks yesterday. But they're back at it once again. They're back talking about the same exact things. Not surprising at all that they'd be back having the same debates about your package is too big. No, it's too small. There's nothing that's just right. So Mitch McConnell says, yes, we would want another stimulus. We're going to try to pass it before the end of the year, but it needs to be targeted. It needs to be targeted right at coronavirus. Among the, re- the things that are missing from his agenda, no stimulus checks for the American people. Zero. Nada. There would be PPP money in there, a renewal of that. Nancy Pelosi says, look, this is a non-starter. We want it to be around $2 trillion. We're not budging on that number. And it needs to have stimulus checks. Okay. So then you've got Joe Biden now around here floating around the outside. And headlines this morning just talk about how quickly... Um, how quickly the Trump administ- or the Biden administration wants to move forward on the pandemic and the economy. Already setting up a stimulus and pandemic task force to start to hold, uh, hold meetings and to move forward on executive action. So according to the reporting this morning, Democrats have already set up a number of executive orders that are already lined up and ready for Joe Biden's signature. Interestingly, with his win, he would be able to go right after forbearance. So let's talk about forbearance and let's talk about student loans. So these are executive actions that are already being written up, ready for a vice pre- a president, get this right, vice president Biden, who's now president elect, who would then become president. So let's talk in January when he's president. Okay. Can you forgive me the many titles? So in January, when he's president, There will be a list of executive actions that he will on day one sign, according to the reporting this morning. First is forbearance for mortgages. Here's what would happen as homeowners, again, are trying to regain employment. More jobs have been added to the economy. There's still huge levels of foreclosures. And what could President President Biden actually do is continue the forbearance programs for another year through executive action fully all the way through 2021 through executive action. That's a huge move. And that's one of the plans already being talked about by the Biden camp. Student loans would be second on this list. This is huge. You would be able to, through Biden's executive order, write off $50,000. I just got chills. And by the way, I'm no Democrat. I'm no Republican. I did not support Biden and I did not support Trump but a $50,000 student loan forgiveness for this group of young people who are saddled with massive amounts of debt and can't get a job because of a pandemic. This is enormous. And is exactly something. I remember when Nancy Pelosi put forward the $10,000 student loan forgiveness, I said, that's too small. $10,000. Most the average student loan debt is over $30,000. So 10,000 fine. That's a, that's a help in part. But now these kids who have to pay back the student loans and they don't even have a job in the field that they studied in. Um, this, is, this is fantastic. Government coffers would be better spent helping those who never had a chance to go to college in the first place. They're able to take some of this money, reinvest it into helping other people who haven't been able to go to college. Give them an ability to get started as well. Through executive action, the president could also do this. So in addition to an executive order to write off up to $50,000 in student loan debt, they could also write off debt that's outside of student loans. Those people who went into debt just trying to keep their family afloat. So there's push for that as well. So if you've run up credit card debt during this time, the president might be able to write off this through executive action. And the government would foot the bill for it. So Wall Street would be happy. In fact, this is why, you know, remember, Wall Street loves a president that's bought, you know, these presidents are bought and sold by Wall Street. This would make Chase happy, wouldn't it? This would make Bank of America happy, wouldn't it? Hey, all these people can't pay their bills. They're falling behind. They're going to have ruining their credit. 
What if the federal government can step in and, and write off up to you know $17,000 per debt holder without the obligation of having to pay back $50,000 for student loans? So among the things we know right now are on the table, forbearance, student loan debt up to $50,000. Um, there's other things that the president, president-elect is also considering, and this would, again, be an end around Congress. Um, extensions of rent, uh, being able to provide some sort of rental assistance at the federal level. So again, the presidency, the, uh, I should say this, the power of the presidency is fairly limited constitutionally when you compare it to Congress. The executive branch is fairly limited. Um, there's very little that a president can actually do. Trade is a big piece of that. They have carte blanche, really, on a lot of trade policy. Peace accords. That's really what the power of the presidency is all about. But there are some advantages from an executive action department that are powerful. Think about the Emancipation Proclamation under Abraham Lincoln. Think about how long that lasted. Up until the Civil Rights Bill. That was like the law of the land through executive action, the Emancipation Proclamation. There's a number of things, of course, through history where the executive order has lasted and stood the test of time. The, Mon the Monroe Doctrine. I'm going to go back to James Monroe. So there are a lot of things, um, trade policy and other things that the president has the power to do. Executive action is a, a smaller piece of that. But it really comes down to Congress to pass any broader stimulus package. But this is some exciting stuff. There are some other plans from uh, Vice President Biden. There, these are all posted, by the way, on his uh, the transition's website. They want to include secure funding right now for ramping up coronavirus testing, acquiring additional protective equipment, such as masks and gowns, and investing $25 billion in vaccine manufacturing and distribution. Um, but of course, one of the big hangups right now is this General Services Administration, the GSA. As you heard me talk about earlier in the show, the General Services Administration is responsible for helping set up that transition office, signing off on it, getting funds over to the new Biden administration, helping them set up their coronavirus task force, et cetera. But right now, that GSA, that administration official who was appointed by President Trump, has not budged on this. Has not signed off on it yet. Just to give you a frame of reference, when George W. Bush, the night President Obama won the election, the very next day, that letter was signed and Obama was able to start moving on this. Again, I come back to the reason we have it in the first place and the reason now it's been moved back almost to election day is because of what happened on 9-11. And we know that because we had a delayed transition of power to George W. Bush, that we were caught flat-footed and one of the reasons... The, uh, the intelligence agencies believe that one of the major reasons we were caught flat-footed is because the Bush administration didn't have an ample amount of time for their transition. They were caught flat-footed, and we don't and we changed that date for this very reason. We're in the middle of a pandemic. Get on it, GSA. You want everyone to know your name? No one knows who the GSA is unless you do something bad, and you're doing something bad right now, sitting on this money sitting on this ability for this cabinet to get set up, sitting on their ability to set up this transition office so they can actually go in and start doing work on this coronavirus task force. If Mike Pence is out golfing and that task force literally hasn't been meeting for weeks, how about move out of the way, let somebody else do some work? Or you just want to continue to, you know, just bury your head in the sand and pretend like you've won this thing and you haven't. They have to have access to these federal agencies to move on this. But without any movement on Trump, without any movement on Congress on a stimulus, this is exciting news on the stimulus front. Pieces of the stimulus that Joe Biden could will go around Congress with a list of these things. And he's inaugurated on January in, at the end of January. He will immediately go to the White House and sign these executive orders. We could see this fifty thousand dollars in student loan forgiveness. I mean, just think about that for a second. What a generation of young people could be lifted up as a result of that. Millennials are getting hit hard, and those college kids right now who just got out, graduated, have no jobs. 
maybe living at their parents' house right now or unable to pay their rent, so they're facing eviction. Yeah, college kids facing eviction. Like they haven't even started their career yet. And already they're having to have this huge setback. Another executive action the president, President Biden could sign as well is um, a credit forgiveness, not just on the money front, but that your credit score should, would not or should not be affected by this. So there's a bunch of things that they're lining up right now on from Vice President Biden um, for a transition on the stimulus front. So some good news there. I'd love to hear from you. Smash that like button if this is good news and subscribe to the channel and drop me a comment below. I want to hear your thoughts on these executive actions. Let me know in the comments below.